Have you felt the presence of the Most High God? Amen. Hallelujah. I come just about that close while I go just to break it loose. When Chris is up here talking about the love of God, I can see the anointing all over him. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I just said, Lord, break him loose. Yeah. Let him just stand up here and preach the word for an hour or two. <laughs> Glory. It's coming, brother. Just be ready. It's coming. It's coming in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me to John 14. John 14, verses 15 through 17. I want to bring you a message today. The title of the message is God in Us. God in us. Hallelujah. Follow me in the scripture, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Say forever. forever. Even the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Okay, 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. How many know we're there? Yeah. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good, traitors, head, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. I want you to think about it for a moment. As we go down through Scripture, we can see where God's plan all along was when man got to the point of being able to be totally forgiven. And when man got to the point where we could receive God into our life, he had a plan all along to live within us. Amen? God the Creator has a determination today to live His fullness in us. Come on, somebody. The God of the creation wants to live in us today in His fullness. Amen. Amen. I want you to see something. Now, we're going to have an illustration. Pull up the first illustration, Kathy, if you would. Take a look here for a moment. See, when people, before God ever comes on the scene in their life, before, before God is even has a meaning in their life, in the world, lost and headed for hell. But when somebody comes to the Lord and gets saved, we see this situation. God has now entered the picture. But there's still a battle to be won over the world and over the flesh. Come on, somebody. We've seen people get saved. And they were so radically saved that in an instant they were all in for God. No more questions about life. No more questions about the world. They were all in for God. Those are rare occasions, but they do happen. Right. But most of the time, it begins that person on a new journey. Yes. How do we overcome the world? How do we overcome the flesh? Right. And God is now in the picture. And He's saying, I want to sit on the throne of your life. I want you to receive all of me. God is saying to the church today, I've given you all of myself. How much of me have you received? Yes. There's so much more. There's so much more. So when we see this situation, yes, the person is now saved. God's entered the picture. But there's a road to travel. Yes. There's some things to overcome. And you know what? Sometimes I, I believe in the church across America today, much of the church is still right there. They haven't fully overcome the world or the flesh. That's why we need more of God. We need more of God. I want God to be all of who He 
is in me 24 7. See, I, I don't want to have to wrestle with the flesh anymore. I don't want to have to wrestle with the things of this world anymore. See, but here's the question How much of God do you have in your life as you sit here right now? How much of God do you have in your life? Do you have enough of God in your life the next time you hear some gossip to shut it down? Do, do you have enough of God in your life the next time you want to fire back and get even with somebody that you want to you ask the Holy Spirit to help you bridle your tongue? How much of God do you have? So in this situation, yeah, the person has now accepted the Lord as Savior. But the world's still there, still real. The flesh is still there, still real. And without the help of God, we'll never make it down that road to glory. Just because they come and got saved, that's just step one. That, that's when the battle really begins in the flesh to overcome the world. But God wants us to know, as, as a creator of all that is, the all-powerful God, all-knowing God, wants to live in us. Wow! We don't deserve it. The only way we can, the only thing we can do is by faith receive Him as who He is. Amen. Thank Him for what He does, but worship Him for who He is. Amen. God Almighty living in us. Amen. You know, if you walk down the street this week and you find a hundred dollar bill on the sidewalk, do you have enough God in you to go find who it belongs to? I'm going to talk to the men just a minute. You're driving down Main Street and you, you see this lady with not nearly enough clothes on. Do you have enough God in it to don't look twice? Same for the ladies. I'm talking about how much God do we have in our life today? Saints, do you know that we're going to need all that God is in us? Yeah. This world is in a mess. It's getting worse every day. It's starting to affect us. All of us are being affected whether we realize it or not. If you think it's been rough in the past, get ready. We haven't seen anything yet. Right. So we need all of God in our life. Amen. We need all of God, all of who He is, all of what He means, all of His power, all of His love. He, God's saying to the church today, I've given you all of myself, but how much of me have you received? Have you made room for me so that I can come in and occupy your life? Have you brought those things to the world to me, says God, so that I can help you to be that overcomer? That I sent my son to the cross so that you could be an overcomer? See, after Jesus went to the cross, then and only then was it possible for God to occupy a believer. Because there was forgiveness. And God said, my son's coming back. To sit at my right hand, I'll not leave you comfortless. And he sent the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord. He said, by my spirit, I'm going to come and live with you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, they come in fully to live inside of you. We shouldn't lack for anything. But we have to understand, God's not going to force himself on anybody. But we have to make a choice every single day. We have to make a choice. God, I receive you today as to who you are. I receive you today so I can be strong. When, I, when, that, when that divine appointment pops up, I have something inside of me that I can minister to that situation. Amen. Yesterday at the gas station, I just pulled in. This lady walked up. And she didn't have enough clothes on, but I didn't look twice either. But she says, can I have a quarter to buy a bottle of water? And I said, you can get a bottle of water for a quarter? Where? She's right here. Gave her a quarter. She went and got a bottle of water. Come back out and I said, where are you from? She said, Sacramento. She's homeless. And I said, you need to be in church tomorrow. She said, I know it. Come to find out, she'd been in church, been hurt, and quit. How many times you heard that? Say, church, we need to get busy about reaching out to those that are hurt, they're battered, they're beaten down, they're all around us. We need to have enough God in us that we're not ashamed to go tell them about Jesus. Amen. We need to have enough God in us to go out and minister healing to them that, that, that are dying all around us every day. The opioid problem in this country is absolutely out of control. And our government don't know what to do about it. 
See, and that's just one example of the situation that our country's in. Church, it's time for the church to get up and declare who we are in the blood of Jesus Christ and go make a change in this world. Make a change in this world. God's plan as we know it was always to have to live in man in order for man to perform miracles, live a successful life, and do kingdom work, and have the power and authority to do so. So in this situation, how does one ever hope to ever overcome the world and overcome the flesh? Only by the power of God in us. See, we can't live a Christian life in God's only exterior. He's got to be fully occupied the throne of her life. See, to help this person step by step, day by day, overcome the flesh, overcome the things of this world. So each one of us today can ask this question. Really, 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 how much of, of God do I have in me? How much of God do I have in me? Do I have enough today? Do I have enough to face what's ahead? Do I have enough to face that bad news when the doctor tells you something next week you just didn't want to hear? And I feel very strongly God just saying over and over again, I've given all I have. I gave my son and I've given myself wholly and completely to you as a believer. When will you accept me to the fullest? <coughs> when, church, when will we accept him to his fullest? See, one thing I hate is to be lied about or be stolen from. I hate that. Amen. But you see, next time that happens to you, do you have enough of God to say, I forgive you? I want to tell you about Jesus. If you think we've been through tests up to now, get ready, folks. You haven't seen anything yet. There's things that the church is going to face in the next year or two that's going to astound you. It's happening behind the scenes right now. They're coming against the church in a big way. About half our country has gone completely mad. Demonic. Satanic. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And they're trying to rip the church apart. So when these things happen, when the problem comes knocking on your front door, that bad news is spoken. Do you have enough of God to get through it? Do you have enough of God to get through it? I just sense the Holy Spirit pleading with the church across America today. I just hear him saying, church, wake up. Wake up. I'm here. I'm available. I'm ready. Just invite me in. Just invite me in as to all of who I am. Invite me in and let me be God of your entire life. Folks, that's our only hope. The only hope for America is Jesus. And, and, and God wants to do it through the church. Hello, somebody. God wants to do it through the church. So how are we going to do it to the church if all we do is come to church on Sunday morning? The next time you feel like you want to go out on the lake on Sunday morning and miss service, do you have enough of God in to say, no, I'm not going, I'm going to church? Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm talking about making God number one in every decision. See, when, when you miss church, and you, and you don't feel something different about it, something's wrong. I'm just going to tell you the truth. You can throw out eggs if you want. <laughs> when you miss church, and you don't feel something different, you don't feel a lack, you feel, you, you feel empty, if you don't, something's wrong. I mean... It's just like the other day when we dismissed the midweek service because of graduation, and we, we need to do that. But my goodness, it felt like a month between Sundays. I said, Lord, it's time to go to church. See? Do, do you have that zeal inside of you? Has God come into your life in such a way that you have a zeal, you just can't stay out of church? That's right. 
just can't stay out of church. If I didn't get to ch come to church at least twice a week, I'd feel like I was naked. <laughs> Spiritually. <laughs> I'm going to keep things straight here. Not in the world. <laughs> See? But this person in this situation, God's desire is for God to become big enough and all enough to where he tips the scale. Amen. Good word. He wants to tip the scale. Let me ask you this question. Has God gotten big enough in your life yet to tip your scale? That's a good word. Good word. Oh, Jesus. He wants to tip the scale Amen. and let him be all of who he is in your life. Yes. Some of you sitting here today are struggling with problems you've been struggling with for a decade or more. Wow. And the reason is because God hadn't been allowed to take his full right in your life. I'm just going to tell you the truth today. If you want change, if you want victory, let God be God. Put him first in all things. See? And we pray that someday this person that's just got saved will, will, will journey down that road and, and, and receive more and more of God every day through prayer, through staying in the Word, through being in church regularly so that they can finally see the day when God comes in and He tips the scale in your favor. Amen. And it's all about God. And it's all in for God. Amen. And that's where He wants to be all the time with us. That's good. He wants it to be all in for God. Show me the second slide if you would, Kathy. That's what He's working for. Amen. God wants to be so big in your life. There's no room for the world. God wants to be so complete in your life. There's no room for flesh anymore. The Bible says, crucify the flesh. Put it down every day. Kill the old man spiritually. Bring it under subjection. Bring every thought under subjection. Do we have enough God in our life to bring every thought under subjection? See, there's people... And there's some here today, and I'm not going to point, I'm not even going to look, but there's some here today that say that, you know what, I know God don't like this, I know it's a sin, but I'm going to do it anyway because he'll just forgive me. You're in trouble. No. You're in trouble. What does the Bible say about that? He didn't send his son to the cross so that his sin could abound, but he sent his son to the cross so we'd be forgiven and have the power enough to say no. Amen. I'm going to do what Jesus says. I'm going to follow his word and no other word. You can't play that game. You can't play that game just because God is a big loving God. You can't say, well, I know it's a sin. I'm going to do it anyway. And I'll repent next week. No. What if you died the second after? We need it real, folks. It's a dangerous attitude to have. But God wants to be so big and so powerful in our life that the scales are tipped and the other side is empty because the world has been overcome. Come on, somebody. The world has been overcome. The flesh has been overcome. It's all about God. Amen. And Him crucified. I'm talking about living a godly life every single day. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it with our own power. We can't do it with our own emotions or imaginations. We can only do it one way, and that's through God alone. Say through God alone. God's the only hope for America. God's the only hope for my home, my household. God's the only hope for Tuolumne County. God's the only hope. Come on, church. God is the only hope. Do you have enough of God in you to overcome the troubles in our head? Do you have enough of God in you to deal with those, those temptations? are coming up next week, tomorrow. Do you have enough God even to say no to the devil? Yes. Put him under your feet. Yes. I just sense that God is standing by. He's just like, okay. When you're ready. When you're ready. When it gets bad enough. When, you get, when you've had enough of what the world can dish out. When you've had enough of what the devil has been doing to you, jerking you around like a yo-yo. When you get enough, then you call on my name. I'll be here. Because I want to be more in your life. I want to be more in your life. Too, too many people are living a life of great struggle because the, the world of flesh is still dominant in their lives. The scales haven't been tipped yet. If we knew, sitting in the church houses across America today, how many people are in the church, Christian people in the church, and 
the scales haven't been tipped yet because they're hanging on to the world they're hanging on to fleshly desires they're hanging on to things junk money, job position, whatever, they're hanging on to things that have become gods in their life what did I tell you a few weeks ago anything that takes what's due only to God becomes your God and God won't stand for that he says there'll be no other gods before. but he wants us to question ourselves today well, when the going gets tough when the test gets tough do I have enough of God in me do I have enough of God in me to endure do I have enough of God in me to be an overcomer over that situation God is tr trying to wake up the church and prepare the church for what's ahead. Because let me tell you, trouble times are here. There's a lot of debate right now. I, I believe with all of my heart, according to God's word, that we're living in the times of troubles. We're not in the tribulation period yet. I don't care what Jim Baker says. <coughs> Come on, say that again. We're not living in the tribulation period yet. The apocalypse hadn't happened yet. Right. We're living in a time of grace. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Woo! <laughs> we're living in a time of grace. But we're living in times of troubles. Right. So we better beef ourselves up with God. We better get ourselves so full of God that we become unshakable like the mighty oak tree planted by the water. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God has a plan for your life. Yes, yes. He has a purpose for your life. We need to, if we don't know what it is, we need to, it's, it's due time that we find out what it is so we can move into that place. But God wants us to know it's time to build ourselves up. Hallelujah. In the most holy faith. Unshakable faith. Authored by the Holy Ghost. Empowered by the Holy Ghost. God living smack in the middle of it. That we have the scales tipped in God's favor and we lock it down. Oh, glory. How many want your scales to be tipped and have it locked down? Yeah. God all the way. Oh, amen. God all the way. God all the way. And then we're going to see the church brought up to a new place. We're going to see great and mighty things done through the church. We're going to see supernatural things done through the church when we get there. Yes. Amen. But folks, we've got a ways to go. A ways to go for sure. But I want to have those scales tipped. And I want to put the biggest lock on it so it can never be lifted up and tipped the other way again. I want the Holy Spirit to have a, a grip on it and lock it down for Jesus. I want to completely close the door on the things of this world. I want to completely close the door on the things of the flesh, the temptations that come at us every day. Don't, don't sit here looking like you don't have temptations. <laughs> None of us are immune. See, and here's the deal. The closer you get to God and the more of God you get in your life, you're going to have bigger temptations. So you better toughen yourself up with more of God. Excuse me. Has God been so big and so dominant in your life that he has tipped the scales in your favor? Or does the, or does the world and the flesh still have most control in your life? Do you have enough of God in you to get you through your next trial? To get you through your next failure? Oh, hello somebody. I'm talking to somebody. To get you through your next failure. Overcome your next heartbreak. Overcome your next temptation. Say no to drugs and alcohol. They'll go help you push through to victory once again. Do you have enough of God in your life? See, if, 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 you, if, it, if you go to the doctor this next week and all he has is bad news, do you have enough of God in your life? Have a neighbor. He's unsaved. He's retired from the prison. He was a guard out there. And he had a heart attack in January and had to have stents put in and so forth. I've witnessed to him over and over and over again. His wife loves the Lord, but they don't go to church. Okay? She used to go to church. But when that heart attack hit, 
he, he thought it was over. He thought it was a done deal. Yeah. See, they rushed him to the hospital, put two or three stints in. So the other day I had a chance to with him. I said, Gary, what do you think now? Do you think God had a little bit of something to do with this? Oh yeah, he saved my life. If you believe that, then I want you to give him your life. Tears. <laughs> big old tear come out of it. Big old alligator tear come out of his eye and ran in his face. I said, Gary, Jesus loves you. He spared your life so that you can come to know him as Lord and Savior. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I've called Gary by name and I said, Gary, you're coming to Jesus. Good. Just get ready. You're coming to Jesus. Amen. What am I talking about? I'm talking about being so full of God that we are ready to take advantage of every opportunity. Being so full of God that we don't have to go back and do a, do a power test because we got it already. See, with God there's no such thing as a power outage. That's right. He said, I give you power. You power to tread on serpents. I give you power to cast out demons and devils. I give you power to heal the sick. I give you power to go out and tell the world about Jesus. And I put power in your words so it will change their life. See, how much of God do we really have in our lives? Do you have enough of God in you to take full advantage of your next divine appointment? you have enough of God in your life to take every thought captive as the Bible tells us hold our tongues when the flesh rises up to judge and to condemn whoa I gotta stop right there you know there was no saying I, I can remember hearing this back when I was a pre-teenager I didn't know what it meant but I soon learned what it meant and, and, and it went like this the church is the only place where they kill their wounded at eight or nine years old I didn't fully grasp that I didn't understand it but by the time I hit 12 or 13 I got it because I could see it see there's not one of us here that has the right to go and judge somebody and condemn them you just committed a sin you better get it right see that's the bottom line do you have enough of God in you when that old temptation begins to grab a hold of you and you want to go tell somebody off do you have enough God in you to say no I'm not going to do it God it's in your hands let me tell you something this is not in my notes see the, the devil is never going to come along and just totally swipe out the church what he wants to do the church is tear it up from within yes The devil knows that the church belongs to Jesus Christ. And he's, God's not going to allow him just to come along and by one stroke wipe out a church. It ain't going to happen. But what he will do is he'll try everything in the book to try to rip up the church from within. Yes. And that's what the devil's trying to do right now. Because there's not enough people that have learned how to control their tongue. They don't have enough God in them to say, no, I'm not going to do that. It's really none of my business anyway. Come on, somebody. We need to stick to God's business. Yes. If you don't have something good to say, then keep your mouth shut. That's mama talking. <laughs> Son, if what you're about to say doesn't build somebody up and help them, keep your mouth shut. Yes. And if I didn't, I got it right across my face. Because she held us accountable. Do you have enough of God in you to hold your tongue when the flesh rises up to judge and condemn? Do you have enough of God in you to minister to the lost, the sick, the devil possessed, those that come in and they don't smell so good, they don't look so good? See, do you have enough of God in you to go up and, and hold them close and love them anyway? Linda's daughter. And, and son-in-law that, that came to the Lord last Sunday. Yes. I told them both, I said, you know, he says, we're not a perfect church, but I guarantee you one thing, we will love you. 
because I believe most of us have enough of God in us to love them unconditionally. No matter what they look like, no matter what they smell like, no matter what their, their track record might be, is to love them to Jesus. Right. See, I'm talking to us, the church. Do we have enough of God in us to be what He's called us to be? That's the question of the hour. See, and how many could look at that illustration and say, God, count me in. I, I want the scales to be tipped in your favor. I, I want to lock that thing down and weigh it down so there's never a chance of it being raised up again. Yes. Yes. I want the world to take a back seat to everything that God wants to do. I want, I want us to subdue the flesh every single day. And it's so easy to get the attitude, well, that person lied to me, stole from me, did whatever they did to me. I have a right to do this. No, you don't. It's really none of your business. You turn it over to God. I want to tell you something. I could write a book, tell you story after story after story, where people have come against me, falsely accuse me, have to go before a judge, have to go to court over it, and I just sat quietly, and all I did was answer the judge's questions. And three of them are dead today. Wow. God says to his word. He takes your business. You don't even need to get involved in it. All you need to do is give it to God. Yes. Yes. Wouldn't life be a whole lot better? Amen. Yes. How will God find you when he comes? Will he find us full of God, full of the Spirit, doing kingdom work? A church with new excitement. A new hunger for winning souls. A new hunger for evangelism. A new hunger to go out and feed the hungry. How's he going to find us when he comes? Stand on your feet if you would. I want each and every one of us to just take a moment. If you would just close your eyes, lift your hands. And be just as serious as you can possibly be. Be just as honest as you can possibly be. And you ask God. God. Do I have enough of you in my life? Have the, have the scales been tipped in your favor? Can I say I'm all in for God? If you can't say that, then I want you to find your way to the altar. Say, altars are open. And by coming, you're saying, I want more of God. How many will join me up here and say, by coming, I want more of God? I want more of God. I want God to rule and reign in my life in every way, every day. I want more of God in my life. Harry will join us here by coming up saying, I want more of God. I want more of God. I want to be more like Jesus every day. Lord, shape me and mold me into what you want me to be. In the name of Jesus. I want more of you, Jesus. I want more of you, Jesus. There, there's at least three people here and you, you, you just feel totally exhausted fighting this battle it's beginning just to wear you down and God's saying I'm here let me set you free. I'm here. Let me set you free. I want you to lift your hands all over this congregation. And by lifting up your voice, saying, Jesus, I want more of you. Fill me to the max. Tip the scales in your favor. Never let me drift away. Never let me 
they fall into the flesh. Help me to bring every thought under subjection. Empower me, oh God. By coming into my life completely. With all of who you are. And all that you have for me. I receive it today. In Jesus' name. Make me more like you, Jesus. Make me more like you, Jesus.